Hey guys. In this episode, I'm going to talk about how you can send JSON Web Tokens to your API from your Please Server application and how you can build a middleware for your outgoing requests. I know it sounds difficult, but it's very easy and let's see why we should do it. So we have this API, which generates JSON Web Token on authentication and sends it back to the client and client stores that token in our local storage. Now the client is supposed to send this token to the API for every request so that API can validate the token and send the response back, right? So that's what we're gonna learn today. We're gonna learn how we can send the stored token, the token that is stored in our local storage, how we can use that token uh, to add it into authorization header request and send it to the API so that AP can validate that token and send the response back. But what if the authorization, the token is empty? What if it's not? Then we do not want to bother our API, right? So that's the reason why we will create a middleware on the client side to check if the authorization header is null or not. We do not want to bother our API if the authorization header token is null. This validation should happen on the client side and that's what is called as outgoing request middleware. So let's look at the demo. Um, I have uh, this demo that I've been working on and when I uh, get into the system, I have two pages, authors and publishers which are pulling information from um, from an API. And I have built these pages which which can handle all the crude operations, right? Um, you can see that's pulling the information right now because uh, my API is not authorizing this request. So let's go ahead and enable authorization on our web API. So I have already created a demo which explain how you can integrate JSON web tokens for your ASP.NET Core Web API. If you have already done it, you do not have to watch it, but I highly recommend to integrate JSON web tokens for your web API. So go ahead, you can go ahead and check out the demo. So I just enabled authorization on my publisher controller and um, I am going to go and refresh this page and see what happens. So if I go to a different page, come back here, you can see that it's saying you may not be authorized to see this information. The reason why we're seeing this message is because our web API is asking for token now and we are not sending the token to or from our place of server application. So what I have done, let's look at the code now. Um, I have created this book service um, uh, book service class which is um, uh, which takes this HTTP client as um, uh, we inject HTTP client using I, I HTTP client factory and use the service for making these API calls right um, and we are going to use this uh, we use this service for pulling pulling all the published from get all async function so what we need to do, we need to inject our local storage, local storage um, that we use for uh, storing our token. So if I go to my login page, you can see that I'm using local storage, Blazor local storage for storing the token, for storing the token when I log in into the system. And we're gonna use this JWT token uh, when we make request to our publisher uh, publisher web API. So to do that, um, what I'm gonna do, we'll have to first inject, um, uh, we'll have to first inject local storage in our book service. To do that, what I'm gonna do, I'm going to copy this and say that I need to inject um, iLocal storage service copy that paste it here and we'll have to assign uh, this local storage with um, with the local storage which is getting injected into our book service so I do that what I'm gonna do I'm gonna say local variable get set to 
the variable the injected local storage sweet now we are going to we have this local storage service in our book service uh, we're going to need to get the token from our local storage to so that I'm gonna go to my get all request so I'm making the request I'm creating a request and then I'm um, then I'm sending the request using my HTTP client so before sending the request what what I would like to do I would like to get the token and add the token in my authorization header so we're going to get the token and add it into our authorization header so that can API our web API can validate it and send back the response so um, let's get the token first I'm going to get the token I'm going to say var token is equal to uh, local storage get item it's uh, it's string which takes key and the key is token which is same as should be the same as what you store when you log in into the system and I'm gonna put an await keyword because it's get item async and now uh, we have this message we'll have to add authorization header to our request message so to do that I'm gonna say request message um, headers uh, authorization header and I'm gonna create a new header new authorization header value which takes the scheme which is going to be better and it's going to take the token that we just got from got from our local storage sweet so we are now sending the token to our web API let's see if it um, if it gives you the response back or not or it still gives you the error message so if I go back to publishers now you can see that it's giving the response back to the user when we send the token okay so now we saw that how you can send the token how you can add that token to authorization uh, uh, authorization header to your request and sends it to your api api validates it and sends the response back but what if uh, your uh, what if your authorization token is null it's empty then you do not want to bother an API to validate the authorization request. We want to make uh, make an efficient system so that you know API does not have to handle stupid requests. Okay, to do that, uh, I'm gonna create a folder first. I'm gonna create a folder and a new folder. I'm gonna call it as handlers. And here I'm gonna create a class, create a call, class called as validate header handler. Validate header handler. Sweet. So this is the class which will handle the request, which will filter the requests which are going to our API. To filter the request, we'll have to inherit a class. Um, the class is going to be delegating uh, delegating handler delegating handler we'll have to bring in some namespace here nice so after you inherit this um, this class we'll have to override we'll have to override a function called this send async so this is the function which gets called before you call your API. So what I'm going to do, uh, we'll have to, once you create this class, you'll have to create a transient instance. You have to register this class as transient, and then we'll have to add this as uh, HTTP message handler to your service that you're calling. So let's first do that. I'm going to go to my startup class and say that services, services add transient, and we will have to add this class as transient. We we'll have to bring in the namespace here. Sweet. And then on our publisher, uh, publisher book service that we are calling uh, to get the response, we'll have to we'll have to add HTTP message handler and the same class so that it knows what validate what validation class it should call before sending the request to the api so what i'm going to do i'm going to put a breakpoint here 
I'm going to put a breakpoint here and I'm going to put a breakpoint on my web API. So this is the function which gets called when I get the publishers. So let's see which breakpoint gets hit first when we send the response, when we send the request. I'm going to run this. The cancellation token will have to bring in a namespace. Bring in a namespace and run this. So if I go to my publishers, you can see that it hit the validate header class, the function send async function before making the request to the API. So when I uh, hit continue, then you can so see that it's coming to our publisher controller. So it puts the filter on your, uh, on your API calls on your client side before it makes the API call. That's sweet, right? So let's check on our client side if our request um, is if our request header contains authorization uh, authorization header or not. Uh, if it's not, then you do not send the request. So I'm going to say if uh, my request request header does not contain authorization auto authorization authorization then sends send that as a bad request so i'm going to say return return new http http response message which takes um, response message which takes um, status code as bad request so it will send this back to um, back to my client when we do not have the authorization header. Let's make this as async function so that it doesn't give me error. Sweet, there you go. So, um, yeah, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back to my book service, bookstore service, and say that we forgot to send the token. We said we are not sending the token, and we see uh, what it does on my, on my validate header handler here. Okay, let's run this and see what happens. So if I go to my publishers, it hits the breakpoint here and it checks if it does not have the authorization header, then it's going to send it as a bad request. Then I get the message that you are not authorized to send uh, to get this information because you forgot to send the token or whatever the reason is. Um, but if, if I do, if I go back to my book service, if I, if I say that we are sending the request, we are sending the authorization header, then it should, you should get the information back from your publisher. So you can see now it has authorization header into headers, and now it will send the request back to the API and we will have information on our web page here. So this is how you can, you know, send authorization um, token in your authorization header, get the valid response back, and put a filter on your client so that you do not bother your web API when the token is null in your authorization header. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me on Twitter and Facebook, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, bye.